So this video is going to be discussing something that Elon Musk recently talked about on Twitter. He basically spoke on Twitter about universal basic income and introduced a rather new concept which is quite confusing because overall it doesn't really make sense and in this video I might make the argument with as to why Elon Musk's universal high income isn't really a thing at all. So let me know because I know this video might be a little bit controversial, but I think once you at least watch it first, you're going to understand why this does make sense from my point of view and why universal high income isn't really a thing. So Elon Musk tweeted in the future, there will be universal high income, not basic in a positive AI future. No scarcity except that which we define to be scarce. In that scenario, everyone can have whatever goods and services they want, and it is less clear how we will find meaning in a world where work is less optional. Now, there's a lot to digest here because there is a lot that was said. Of course, one of the first you know, controversial things is that he said income will be high and not basic in a positive AI future. An article I was reading also discussed this and basically said that just because the income is high it doesn't mean that it will actually work because there are some fears around universal basic income because some people believe that basic income will be a trap in the sense that the government gives you a basic income and you'll have no way to work slash earn money. Now, this is something that I'm going to get into later, but of course, no scarcity. I do believe that this could potentially happen in the far, far future, but if we take a look at how society is divided up right now, we can see that food is abundant, yet many people do not have enough food to eat all the time, and we waste trillions of pounds slash dollars of food per year. So this is definitely a hopeful scenario, and I'm not saying that you need to be a doomerist in the sense that you need to think that the future is dystopian, but you also need to be a realist in how resources might actually be distributed. And of course, yes, I do believe that it is going to be less clear on how we find meaning in a world where work is optional. That is going to be very confusing for many people, including myself. Now, with regards to universal high income, Elon Musk has discussed this on a podcast with UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. So I'm going to show you guys this clip here. What would your kind of observation be on, on AI and the impact on labor markets and people's jobs and how they should feel about that as they, as they think about this? Well, I think we are seeing the most disruptive force in history here. Um, you know, where we have for the first time, we will have for the first time something that is smarter than the smartest human. Um, and that, I mean, it's hard to say exactly what that moment is, but, but there will come a point where no job is needed. You can have a job if you want to have a job for sort of personal satisfaction, but the AI will be able to do everything. So I don't know if that makes people comfortable or uncomfortable. It, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, that's why, that's why I say if you, if, you, if you wish for a magic genie that gives you any wishes you want, and there's no limit, you don't have those three limits, three wish limits at Nonsense, uh, you just have many, <laughs> many wishes as you want. Um, so uh, it, it, it's both good and bad. Um, one of the challenges in the future will be how do we find meaning in life if, if you have a magic genie that can do everything you want? I, I, I do think we, we it's, it's, it's hard, you know, when, it is, when, when there's new technology, it tends to have, have usually follow an S-curve. In this mm -hmm. case, we're going to be on the exponential portion of the S-curve for a long time. Um, you'll, be able to, like, so you'll be able to ask for anything. It'll, it, it won't be, a, and we won't have universal basic income. We'll have universal high income. So in some, in some sense, it'll be somewhat of a leveler um, or an equalizer, you know, because really, I think everyone will have access to this magic genie. Um, and you'll be able to ask any question. It'll be, certainly be good for education. You could, it'll be the best tutor you could and the most patient tutor, uh, <laughs> so they're all there. Um, and uh, there will be no shortage of goods and services. There will be an age of abundance. Um, I think if, I'd recommend people read uh, Ian Banks. The, the Banks culture books are probably the best envisioning, in fact, not probably, they're definitely by far the best envisioning of an AI future. Um, there's nothing even close. So I'd recommend, really recommend Banks. And so essentially what Elon Musk is discussing there at the last part, of course, he's discussing Ian Banks, the culture series. This is a series of books that actually discusses the post AGI future where resources and things of that nature. Essentially, the basis of this article here is basically stating that, look, believing that UBI needs to be high fosters a poor understanding of how universal basic income works, which is what I want to try and correct here. UBI is a flaw. It's a foundation. 
and all income is earned on top of it. For example, if your income is now $50,000 a year, then a $15,000 UBI would mean that your income before taxes is bumped up to $65,000 a year. And I think this is very true. UBI doesn't need to be high. It just needs to be a floor that essentially just stops poverty. I think that whilst yes, there does need to be some level of inequality. And when I say some, there's a nuance in the sum, meaning that people don't need to literally be struggling to find clothing and food and basic needs. But I do believe that there needs to be an aspect of people that provide these goods and services and are rewarded for that. And this article actually speaks about how, you know, Elon Musk doesn't want people to fear the automation that he intends to sell through and how Elon Musk has exp expressed repeatedly that he doesn't see UBI as something to do now, but instead only as something to do after a lot of jobs have been automated. However, this article is actually really on point because it's basically stating that what is the point about doing it later when we need to be doing it right now? Because because people are already impacted by AI and robots. This article continues to basically state that UBI is something that we should have gotten going back decades ago in the 1970s before computerization took off and these killed wage growth. And if you don't know what I mean by that, think about how back in the day, your parents could have easily afforded a house based on one person's salary. And now you need like two people working two jobs in order to afford a simple down payment. And of course, the $50 trillion in the new economic wealth was mostly diverted into the hands of the top 1% of Americans. He continues to state that it's important to to understand that between that right now and some unknown future date where technology has increased unemployment in a way considered finally sufficient for UBI to be implemented by those like Elon, the impact will continue being what it's always been. Inequality will rise. People like Elon will get much richer and for those who lose their jobs, they'll find new ones. Some people will find jobs that pay more but many, potentially most, will find jobs that pay less. And this article, I must agree, is quite aggressive for UBI. He goes on to state here, and this is going to be the final point. How does high inequality need to get before it's considered too high? If unemployment never rises to a level considered too high because people are continually able to find new jobs that pay less, then when does someone like Elon say it's time for UBI, high or not? Is there a functioning society for us to exist in where unemployment at 5%, but the majority of the population has jobs that don't sufficiently cost the cover of living or the spend it needed to fuel the economy. What does that society look like? I think this, that society looks exactly like ours. It's already here. We exist in that time with low unemployment and high inequality, largely generated from decades of technological advancement, industrial offshoring, and tax cuts for the rich. What I did also find interesting that Canada is supposedly introducing some use, some sort of universal basic income. There was this clip on Twitter Introduce, where they actually uh, spoke about this. Work to develop a guaranteed livable basic income. We are struggling throughout this country with homelessness, food insecurity, poverty, health, mental health issues. And this is one way that we could start to look at these issues. It's not the only way, but it's certainly a key way. And I think we've gathered a great deal of data to show the positive consequences of offering people the opportunity. Half of Canadians are pessimistic about their personal finances. A quarter of low-income families cannot pay for monthly expenses. Um, there was also this from DeepMind's co-founder who warns governments seriously need to find solutions for people who lose their jobs to AI. There's going to be a serious number of losers, warns Mustafa Suleiman, who helped found Google's AI lab. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, if you know Google Gemini, the chatbot, that is from Google DeepMind, who were essentially acquired by Google. So you had DeepMind, they got bought by Google and Google, of course, now that they're DeepMind, they essentially created these chatbots. The point I'm trying to make here is that Mustafa Suleiman is not just some random AI researcher. This guy is a serious integral part to Google's team or was Google's team. He's now at Microsoft leading the head of the AI division and him ushering such a stark concern stating that there's going to be a serious number of losers. I would definitely like to see these world leaders. I'm not sure what these guys are talking about. I know that sometimes they always have these AI safety summits. So this is actually my point from here. At these safety summits or at these discussions right here, you can see, in fact, you actually can't see. Let me get you guys a bigger image. You can see here Dario Amade, the CEO of Anthropic, the company that launched the clapbot chatbot Claude. You can see Demis Hassabis, the CEO of Google's DeepMinds Lab. You can also see Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. You're not going to get a room with more knowledgeable people in the space of AI, but I think they actually spoke about the wrong thing. You can see here that this is the same image and this is where they talk about what they spoke about. The main thing that they discussed about was that they discussed things about disinformation, national security and existential threats. Whilst yes, these are things that need to be considered, why haven't they been discussing about 
how this is actually going to impact people's future and how there isn't really a safety net for people that lose their careers due to this advance in technology. The only thing that they did say was that the prime minister and CEOs are committed to work together to ensure society benefits from such a transformation. They didn't say that society is going to be at least not getting the negative effects from this transformation in terms of job loss. Why isn't this something that they are addressing? You can also see here that the UK Prime Minister launches a new AI Safety Institute and he says our AI Safety Institute will be acting as a global hub on AI safety, leading vital research into the capabilities and risks of this fast moving technology. Whilst yes, once again, these things are good, I would love to see these governments and these individuals actually focus on something that's going to impact people because whilst yes, if AI robots do take over, nobody's going to be alive anyways, but... I think that many people losing their careers and livelihoods to AI and thrust into a never ending spiral of poverty is something that is more of a concern. The reason I also want these governments to start actually thinking about these kinds of issues right now is because this is something that you do want to do sooner rather than later. You don't want ChatGPT 6 to be dropped and then of course governments are scrambling to sort of figure out how these companies are going to pay their severance packages or how they're going to explain that they're firing literally half of their companies because sector workers whose jobs are automated away thanks to the advent of AI and other technologies. So this is something that I think these governments actually need to start thinking about now because the problem is is that governments usually wait until the last minute to do something and by then the solution is pretty slapdash so i would say that these governments actually need to work together with these ai companies in order to essentially make sure that they can delay the release of these models because of course like i said before focusing on ai safety doesn't help the average person but ensuring that these models are delayed so that society can have the time to actually transition is going to be something that is integral for ensuring people are completely screwed over by this technology. The solution is we need to be better at distributing the fruits of this technology to everybody. Buy something sometimes called a universal basic income, although I don't like that word basic because it suggests that people will just have a quite a low quality of life. I prefer to think of it as a universal generous income, not a UBI, but a UGI because Although it may not be very large in absolute terms, it will be enough for us to have a very good quality of life. Why? Because all the things that we'll need, whether it's healthcare or education, whether it's accommodation, food, uh, com uh, consumer goods, so many of them will be available at much lower costs than ever before. How? Thanks to automation, thanks to the improvements in technology. So overall, let me know what you thought about this. Do you think universal basic income is going to be enough? Do you think there needs to be a different you know, thing that people need to think about? And do you think universal high income even makes sense? But overall, I do know that these governments need to actually start thinking about this. And because, of course, governments are going to be, I've taken the initiative to start my community, which is post AGI preparedness. This is a community where we discuss many of the different things there. It's pretty interesting. So if you'd like to check out the school community, I recently made a 22 page guide on which of the best sectors you want to be investing in slash companies to actually benefit from the AGI slash AI revolution. And I made a pretty comprehensive guide on how to actually prepare for AGI and prepare yourself so that you aren't innovated away and you still have a long lasting career in the world of AI.